A very good morning to fellow panels and my name is Wiki. My research topic for this semester is optimizing thermal performance in physical special needs secondary school through integrations of thermal strategies. Most schools in trof tropics are often viewed as a prototype building without consider considerations based on their local climate conditions. School, as a result, schools were built to the same standards regardless to of the occupant's thermal comfort, especially for physical disabled students. When thermal conditions of the classrooms did not meet the requirement of ASHRAE and SNI standard, physically handicapped persons will demonstrate disrupted thermal regulatory behavior in response to the hot and cold environment temperatures. So the aim of this research is to design a good thermal performance physical disabled school as well as to improve the physical wellness of the students. The research objectives are to identify how thermal performance and ventilations in school affects the thermal comfort of the physical disabled students, to determine a stu study on double skin facade and cordia in providing an optimal thermal comfort learning environment, and lastly, to propose an appropriate double skin facade and cordia to achieve an optimal thermal performance learning environment. So, why ventilation and thermal performance for physical special needs? Uh, this article said that uh, being on wheelchairs are actually lack of ventilation and it helps to lead to accumulations of sweat and irritations, and at the same time, it's actually a common problem due uh, by people with disabilities. So what happened was for normal people, uh, when we sweat, it, it sweat intended to cool down the surface of the body by interacting with the air. However, for disabled, they will have difficulty in shifting their weights, hence having issues in perspirations and that causes skin irritations. Hence, it's important to and crucial to create a well-ventilated and good thermal performance learning environment for the physical special needs occupants. So why, uh, why this causes them uh, having issues in the class in their learning environments? Uh, why is thermal uh, performance is so important in school for physical disabled? It is because uh, they spend most of their time uh, long, in long hour indoor classes and if the the learning environment is not designed to be well ventilated, it will cause thermal regulation problem doubt uh, for the people with disabilities. So there's two passive cooling methods for thermal comfort that I'll uh, study on and design in this research is double skin facade, which is heat prevention and protections, whereas for wind driven cause ventilations for the courtyard is focusing on the heat dissipation and also rejections. The clients are a corporation of Ministry of Education Malaysia, Yayasan Army Foundations and Leap Ad Services, whereas the user are secondary school physical disabled children at the age of 13 to 17. The site is located at Jalan Kampung Lalang, Edu City, Iskandar Putri, Johor Bahru, and is actually uh, surrounded majority by institutions and also commercial buildings. Moving on to site planning, I focus on uh, four category which is the circulation, noise, sensory view and also the wind and sound path whereas for building programs and spaces uh, is divided into five main categories which is learning, management, F&B, recreational and also accommodations. So uh, one of the case uh, study for this that I study is about disabled school where uh, I study on how they focus on um, moving stuff to single story structures and at the same time they combine spaces for multiple usage and equip large classroom with ample built-in storage spaces. For design strategies, uh, the first uh, these strategies are split level floor system. When we talk about physical disabled, uh, by having split level uh, floor system, it reduces the vertical height from one floor to another, hence the, the length of the ramp reduces as well. That's helped to reduce the distance traveled by the physical disabled. The second uh, design strategy is the courtyard configurations where uh, there's a literature review stated that it's optim to obtain the optimum shading and wind ventilations, it's best to have the courtyard orientation, uh, orientation phasing uh, elongated to northeast and southeast directions. Um, another design case study I have studied is Huadao Middle School, China, where it um, 
they have caught courtyards which helps to create different volume and enriching spatial hierarchy and visual connections and at the same time there are ramps and also stairs create more spaces for social interactions and also serve as vertical circulations as for design uh double skin facade while the semi-open courtyard facing north-south tackling part of the thermal issue, the classrooms and dormitories are exposed to morning and evening sun, which produces direct glare and higher radiance. In this case, double skin facade provides sheets and at the same time enable to reduce the heating and cooling consumption as well focusing on the classrooms and dormitories. So, uh, as we all know, uh, double skin facades are expensive in terms of construction costs. However, installing double glazed windows would be definitely reasonable as these windows save up to 50% in total load of the buildings. Since uh, double skin facades are actually uh, pretty expensive, perforated metal are a good alternative as it's cheaper than double and triple glazing. According to this research conducted, Perforated metal provides low solar heat gain coefficient as well, having less solar heat transmit and provide good shading at the same time. The building is designed to be natural ventilated, hence the cost of the perforated double skin facade can be offset by the AC expenses in long run term. So this is the double skin uh, facade case study they have studied. They use perforated metal panels wrapped around a primary skin of glass wall to create a high-performance dual facade. It helps to maximize energy performance and reduces glare at the same time. Here's the uh, east perspective of the building and how do I come up with this form? Uh, first, I started off by side messing with rough messing with long east and west facade, short north and south facade. Second, uh, having the green courtyard split plan the messing to two significant zones separating the private and public spaces. Third, permeability to, and to create pocket spaces and work to improve air ventilation and sensory view. Fourth, hierarchy and view. Uh, and fifth, integrations of ramp circulations and additions and subtractions of spaces. And lastly, zoning. Zone the messing according to programs, subtractions on lower level to allow open circulation flow. Here's a key plan, uh, location plan and also the site plan. If you look at here, along Jalan Kampung Lalan is actually a two-lane road. Hence, that's where I located my uh, ingress and egress. And for ground floor, if you look at the plan, uh, the, the ground floor plan is mostly uh, public and also private public spaces such as uh, lobby, communal spaces and also like cafeteria. Here's a perspective shot of the welcoming lobby for drop-off to have occur. And for first floor plan, for first floor plan, um, it's zone uh, for host, uh, separated to two, which is the hostel and also the learning blocks. For indoor courtyard, uh, it's that not serve is it did not serve only for discussion purposes, but at the same time it can serve as a places for the students with disabled uh to have their lunch outside during their uh lunch time. So here's the perspective shots and for same goes to second floor divided into two zones. The discussion areas third floor. Uh, which focuses more on the management, communal, and also the hostel. And here's the acad uh, a shot of the academic block internal ramp. So having uh, a courtyard in the center of the building shall not serve the sole purpose of tackling the thermal issue, but at the same time, it shall stimulate learning opportunity and social interactions. Ramp who act as the main circulation traveling from one space to another shall serve purpose more than that as well, acting as an interaction space and part of the aesthetic design of the building. Here's the library, sub basement, and here's the west perspective. Here's the sections, we're in elevations, and also the sectional perspective showing the sport field, assembly area, walkway, meeting room, MP30, and also the dormitory lounge. For double skin facade, is uh there's three main components which is the fab fab the most exterior part, the fabricated perforated metal sheet, 
aluminium subframe and also the aluminium frame top hump window come with 8mm thick clear fi fixed glass panel. So here's the uh, perspective shot of the classrooms where for classroom simulations facing is uh, there's three uh, temperature that I've took from the generator from design builder which is the air temperature, radiant temperature and so operative temperature. Uh, I did a comparison of with and without uh, the perforated metal double skin facade and it's measured solely based on the natural ventilation without the addition of cooling devices example electrical fan and AC. Here's the dormitory where uh, the same uh, there's a comparison between windows with overhang and also double skin facade with perforated metal sheets. The temperature reduces from as you can see from the table, the temperature reduces from uh, 3 to 5 degrees Celsius. And here's a table for the further uh, understanding. So uh, for simulation analysis, I've compared, I've put side by side for classroom facing east and also dormitory facing west, where the table shows the integrations of perforated metal double skin facade of the building. Uh, the average operation operative temperature reduces from 3 to 7 degree, degrees Celsius. The average operative temperature of the classroom with double skin facade is 26 degrees Celsius to 29 degrees Celsius. Hence, it achieved the human thermal comfort of 26 degrees Celsius to 28 degrees Celsius according to ASHRAE standard 55. So here's the development data where my gloss for area is around 15,000. 379 meters square with 52 parking uh, provided. Here's the schedule of accommodations and references. That's all for my presentation today. Thank you.